All right, Alexander, let's talk once again about France, making a lot of news, France. And uh, we have protests, violent protests in Paris and actually throughout France. And we have a, a French president in Macron who, once again, as we've been saying in many videos, just seems detached and disinterested in everything that is going on in, uh, in France. What, what's your take on things? Yeah, I mean, this has been a very interesting uh, and rather disturbing affair because, of course, it's not like some of the you know, big street protests we've seen, um, and which we've talked about a lot. It's not like the, the, you know, the yellow vests or anything of this kind. The yellow vest protests, it's important to stress this, were initially peaceful. To the extent that there was violence, the overwhelming weight of it came from the police. This is not like that. So what happened was um, there was an incident. A boy was killed, a teenage boy, 17-year-old boy, was killed. He came from, um, he had a North African background. Um, there's been lots of tensions between the immigrant community, parts of the immigrant community, and the police in many French towns and cities, and this acted as a trigger, and we see protests, and this time often very violent protests, in large, in right across France. I mean, it was like a sort of wildfire that broke out across France, um, apparently in one place, um, you know, the uh, the, the uh, mayor's headquarters was burnt to the ground, and cars have been torched, and all kinds of things of this kind has happened. Now, I mean, I, I don't want to, you know, simplify things or make them more um, clear cut than perhaps they are. And you know, I'm not suggesting you know, you know that this was just one community that was rising up, but I do get the sense that this is more something that comes from immigrant areas rather than from you know the more conservative French ethnic areas where the original Yellow Vest protests originated from. And what this does, again, is that it exposes the growing fault lines in French society and the growing distance, as you correctly say, between the authorities and every community in France, the immigrant communities, the more conservative Catholic traditional communities, the urban middle classes, everybody in France now is becoming increasingly disaffected and they are becoming more hostile to each other. There's been much more increasing criticism of the pace of immigration into France. That's playing straight into Le Pen's hands. Her star, as we discussed recently, is rising. And Macron, as you correctly say, is completely disinterested. And perhaps the most interesting thing, the most interesting development, the most interesting fact about these latest protests is, as you absolutely rightly said, they were spread out across the whole of France. Towns, cities, urban communities right across France were affected by them. And the police were called out, the riot police were called out, but apparently there are now concerns in France that, you know, if this thing were to snowball, which it doesn't look as if it will on this occasion, but if it were to snowball, there just aren't enough police in enough places, riot police in enough places, to maintain control. Now, given that, as far as I can see, the only reliable base of Macron's support is parts of the bureaucracy and the riot police. That must be a matter of serious concern to the French government. As I said, so you get, you get the overall sense, as I said, of a country that is continuing to head towards an ever deeper crisis with the president himself completely, completely unconnected to it. And instead, I mean, he talks about cracks in Russia, the political system there, that the Prigozhin affair has exposed cracks in Russia, and he seems oblivious to the rioting and crisis on his own doorstep. Yeah, it seems like all the collective West leaders have this belief that, that the, the focus on Ukraine, they can continue to use that excuse for, for infinity. I, I think that's run out. I think maybe, you know, the first six months of the conflict, 
maybe the first year they were able to blame everything on Russia, uh, focus on Ukraine and just talk about Russia and Ukraine while their own countries collapsed and people were were zombified enough to to go along with it. But that's that's run out now, and 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 and, and Macron hasn't realized it. He's he's still yapping on about about Russia and Ukraine and uh, and Wagner and cracks in Russia and all these things, and and it just has no more traction in no. uh, in France. And I think this is a general statement for all of the collective West leaders, most people in collective West countries now. They just don't want to hear about Ukraine anymore. They want their leaders to start focusing on their collapsing countries and their collapsing economies, which is what's happening in the collective West. Every country, maybe with the exception of one or two countries, but every country is, uh, most every country is in some sort of state of uh, decay or collapse. Absolutely. I mean, no, no, there's no question about this. Even a country like Spain, where uh, for very specific reasons inflation is low, it's less, than not, it's less than 2%. But even there, there is a sense of malaise of a different kind. And even there, the government looks like it's going to lose the coming election. So everywhere there is this, this sense of malaise. And France, of course, is a seminally important country. It's perhaps in some ways, the bellwether. So, you know, if there's big change in France. It tends to affect everywhere else in Europe. This has been true ever since the first French Revolution of the 18th century. But, you know, they don't want to see it. And in Mar Macron's case, he absolutely doesn't want to see it. So he called a meeting of his security officials. He chaired it. But he's not done anything real that would change the situation or would change the current direction because he's not he's bored by the whole topic he's not really interested in it his security advisors might be worried about it but i think he himself doesn't really believe that he's going to be challenged in that kind of way and he's i think at some level conscious of the fact that he's losing control in terms of political control of france but already he's thinking of something else, you know, Secretary General of the UN or something of that kind. So, uh, though even there, they're now having problems. I mean, they couldn't agree between them, it turns out, on who would eventually succeed Stoltenberg as Secretary General of NATO. So the old war horse, uh, Stoltenberg, is going to be kept on for a further year. So, you know, even that is becoming more difficult. But, you know, they don't want to see it. They've, the leaders of the West have become the three monkeys. They, sh they, they, they don't hear, they don't see, they don't speak. You don't have Macron, for example, coming out, addressing the French people, meeting with them, visiting these areas on an important uh, way, doing the kind of things on an everyday, active basis, the way that former French leaders like de Gaulle, and even, if I have to be frank, Mitterrand, <laughs> might have particularly liked or, or, or Chirac or whoever, in the way that they used to do. He remains cocooned in Paris. He does come out from time to time. He does make addresses to the French people from time to time. But I, was, I was actually in France once when, I, when he was making one of his addresses to the French people. And I watched it and I was actually in a bar in France with all sorts of people around me and I was just noticed the complete lack of interest in <coughs> what he was saying and the remoteness of it all. <coughs> and I have to say also, the sheer unreality of Macron himself. I mean, he, he didn't embody for me any idea of what a French president should be like as compared with the kind of French presidents that I remember. Yeah, I mean, Ma Ma Macron, uh, Trudeau, I'm trying to think of other, other leaders in Europe. Almost every leader in Europe, the collective West, almost every leader in the collective West, I mean, they, they can't walk out on the streets no. without having something thrown at them or being yelled at. I mean, it's, and yet they still don't realize this. That's the strange part about it, is they still think that they're loved. No, no. They think that they're loved and they're respected. And, and, not, and, and they don't realize that they can't walk out to greet a crowd yeah. without being slapped, which is the case for Macron. Yeah. When he walks out to greet people, 
they slap him on every single occasion. And, and it seems like he, he hasn't received enough slaps to realize that, uh, that people don't want him. You are completely correct. French don't want him. You're completely correct. Can I also, by the way, say that the other thing about all our leaders in the West is that they all look like each other. I mean, it's very easy to imagine Trudeau and Macron exchanging places. Yeah. And I don't think many people would even notice, actually. Because like from I mean, an assembly line. Exactly. They're all from an assembly line. They all look the same. They all sound the same. They all uh, make the same talking points. They all talk about Ukraine all the time. They all talk I mean, in exactly the same way about every conceivable topic. And they, they come from the same um, age groups, the same demographics, the same kind of elite school backgrounds. And, um, and this is true, whether they call themselves socialists or conservatives or whatever, they all, they all come across as exactly the same. But, you know, there are some countries where you can do that to a greater extent than others. I mean, you can do this in Italy, for example, up to a certain point, because in Italy, government, the prime minister, has never been a particularly strong figure in the political system. It's, Italy has been, if we're talking about Maloney, like, you know, it's always been a kind of controlled chaos there. If we're talking about Germany, well, you know, it's a very orderly, law-abiding, well-organized country. You can have a bad government, and somehow the bureaucracies and the officials, and they will still keep things going. And if you talk about Britain, well, again, we're a very law-abiding country. You can do an awful lot of things wrong, and people go about their normal lives being angry and upset. But they weren't right. France is different. France, there is an expectation that the leader of France actually lead it. <laughs> That's the first thing to say. And... Um, the French have a much shorter, or have historically had, a much shorter tolerance of this sort of thing that we are seeing now, which is why, of course, France might be the point where it all breaks down. Now, as I said, we mustn't overstate what has happened, um, you know, over the last few hours in France, but rioting, hundreds of people arrested, fires in all sorts of French cities. I mean, it is a big event. And, you know, compare it with the riots in the United States in 2020. It's on something like the same kind of scale. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the one builds on the other. No, right one now. builds on the yeah, other, exactly. Riots, a little bit of calm, then other riots, a little bit of calm, protests. It just keeps on building and building. Exactly. And, and, and one day it's going to... Yeah. Going to break. It's going to tip over, exactly. It's going to tip over. I mean, it, it, it's inevitable now. And I have to say, with every one of these incidents, um, it seems to me Le Pen's position becomes stronger. I mean, I, I think it's a fact people don't perhaps know that Le Pen is now actually winning support in the immigrant areas. <laughs> even, among, I mean, even though her major stance has been to oppose immigration. I mean, people who've established themselves as immigrants within France and have been there for a long time now are starting to want law and order, some kind of degree of you know, public control. They're starting to say, well, we're not getting it from Macron. We're not getting it from any other establishment politician. Perhaps we can get it from Le Pen. We haven't always liked what she stood for or what she says, but at least she will bring us calm. All right, uh, the Duran.locals.com. We are on Rumble, Odyssey, BitChute, Telegram, and Rockfin. Go to the Duran shop, 10% off. Use the code. Good day. Take care.